A Southworth duplex boiler feed pump service. Part 6. Making a pair of gaskets for the steam cylinder covers using a quick and simple method. Then fitting the cylinder covers in place. Refitting the displacement lubricator inlet banjo type union and trying a test run using compressed air to see if it works. This is a shot of the steam cylinder end of the pump. The original gasket material used on this pump was unserviceable, so I'm going to make a couple of new ones. And for that, I'm taking some measurements from the engine. I haven't seen the drawing, but I was surprised to find that the steam cylinders are 15 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. The external diameter of the covers is 1 and 3 eighths of an inch. When I received the complete O-ring sets from Blackgate's Engineering, I did notice by looking at the parts list that these were one inch in diameter. Is this intentional or not? I really don't know. When I fitted the piston rings to the pistons and put them in the cylinder, they felt fine. I'm going to make two gaskets, one for each cylinder cover. And here is an example of a piece of mahogany that I'm using, because I'm going to drill the holes through the gasket and I don't want to drill through onto the worktop. I know this is not very accurate, it would be much better to sort of mark through the holes and drill them out. It worked fine. Initially I used a compass to draw two rings on the gasket material, but in the end I drew around the covers, held them in place and drilled through the holes. Then I simply cut out the shape using a pair of scissors. I usually make gaskets this way, and to tidy up the raggy edges of the inside of the gasket, I use a drum sander in a bench-mounted Proxon motor tool. With the gasket in place, I fitted every one of the bolts, including the washers that came with them. Which is something that I seldom do. I do not see washers on full-size steam engines. It's usually a big bolt against a cast-iron surface. But this is not a full-size steam pump, and after all, it was originally fitted with these washers, so it seemed like a good idea to refit them. Initially, when I fitted the bolts one at a time, I didn't tighten them up. That's what I'm doing at the moment. One down and one to go. I'm not going to repeat the gasket making exactly as I've just shown. I'll just show the highlights if there is such a thing. Here I'm cutting the centre out of the gasket. And as before, cleaning it up with a drum sander. When I use this type of gasket material, the drum sander makes it a bit rough on the inside edge. And here I'm using a small blowtorch just to burn away the raggy parts. Unorthodox perhaps, but it works for me. Here's the completed job. Both of the cylinder covers are now fitted to the steam cylinder. On the top of the steam chest is the remains of the graphited yarn that I pulled out of the glands. This is not a good idea, it's far too thick. If you're going to fit graphited yarn in addition to O-rings, Make sure it's very thin stuff so you can wind it around the piston and gland rods to seal them. Now it's time to fit the steam inlet and the displacement lubricator. This banjo union leaked, so I'm cleaning it up using a piece of Scotch-Brite, and when I fit it back to the engine, I'm going to use some Loctite 542 thread sealant. Often I chop up pieces of Scotch-Brite into little strips, I find them very useful for getting into corners which I couldn't get the big pad into. I didn't like the way this part fitted into the rest of it. I used some Loctite 542 on this as well. The centre of this banjo union has a really long thread. I'm using my Barco spanner as always to tighten it. And for the viewers who criticise my use of Barco adjustable spanners, here's the proof. It does not round the nut or the bolt. Not all adjustable spanners are equal. At last, the engine is now back together, and it's ready for an initial test run, I think. But this is not the end of the series. What I'm doing at the moment is oiling all the moving parts. I did find one problem with this pump that I wasn't aware of. I'm not going to show the fix either, because it involves some very sensitive lathe work not something that a beginner to the hobby should be doing. But I will explain it in detail in the next episode. All these clips are running in real time. There was no rehearsal. I connected the compressed air and this is what happened.
Please do not do what you're about to see. I'm making adjustments to the pump whilst it's running. This is not a good thing to do. But these days, I'm afraid to say this is the only excitement I get in my life. As you can clearly see, the amount of oil that is exiting the exhaust is excessive, but at this stage I'm basically re-running in the engine and it's very important to make sure that all of the parts are lubricated all of the time to excess. Before any viewers write in to tell me, I am fully aware that there is a brass nut missing off the end of the valve rod. It fell on the floor, but now I've found it and I'm fitting it. The timing is currently not set correctly and also there is another problem that I will go into in the next episode. But I'm nearly there now, I think this pump is going to run very well once I've made one or two adjustments to it. Not to mention that at this stage the pump was only working in single acting mode. More about that in the next episode too. I'll leave the pump running in for a while. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.